Zuni Cafe in San Francisco is an iconic American restaurant that first opened its doors back in 1979. But it wasn't until the late 80s when Chef Judy Rogers got there that the place got some serious notoriety. And the most popular menu item they have is a perfect roast chicken that serves two people and is served with a bread salad. And in fact, Bridget and I were there just a few months ago and enjoyed it. It was delicious. It was delicious. There's a lot of restaurant love that goes into that dish. So it's hard to duplicate it at home. But let me tell you a little bit about how they make it. So they start with the chicken a whole chicken that's roasted. They flip it several times. After it comes out of the oven, they actually make a little slit in the skin, pour off some of that juice, then reduce it. They do make a bread salad. They take ciabatta, they cut it up into cubes, toast it, broil it. It gets tossed with that beautiful chicken drippings. We're gonna try to condense this down as much as we can, but we do not wanna sacrifice that beautiful flavor that we get out in San Francisco. All right. All right. Hello, chicken. This is what we're using here. This is a four pound chicken. Now, we are not going to roast it whole. We want it to roast faster and easier. So we're gonna butterfly it. So this is breast side. I'm gonna put it breast side down. There we go. And use my kitchen shears here. I'm gonna cut alongside the tail piece, just right along the backbone. If you don't have a good pair of kitchen shears, they are worth the investment. Not only for this, you can cut right through raw chicken bones without breaking a sweat. And let me get the other side. And that backbone can be thrown into the freezer. Once you go to make stock or soup, mm -hmm. it's ready for you. All right, there's a bowl over there. Thank you. Let's mm. get rid of that for now. So I'm gonna flip this over and then press down on the breast here just to flatten it, just like that. Now, if it's giving you a little bit of a hard time, I actually like to take a little paring knife. Right here, this is a little bit of soft bone. Just make a slit like that, and it just makes flattening it even easier. Good trick. So now, what I wanna do is season this. We wanna get seasoning, salt in particular, underneath the skin. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take, just where the skin starts to pull away from the meat, I'm gonna take my finger and just loosen that, just like that and go down into the drumstick as best I can. Do the same thing for the thigh on this side. Start small, you can always work your way up. All right, same thing with the breast meat. I'm gonna start to work my finger right in between the skin and the meat. Just work my way down, again, releasing the skin. Loosening the skin on the chicken like this not only makes it easier to season the meat underneath, but also it adds kind of an air pocket so that skin will brown more easily. All right, so now I need to get seasoning underneath the skin. And I've got a little bowl of kosher salt here. I've poured it out of the box because you don't want to keep reaching mm -hmm. in between the chicken and the box of salt. Not with raw chicken. All right, so now I'm going to add a half a teaspoon to each thigh and to each side of the breast. And I am using a measuring spoon for that. I just want to make sure it's all even. Another half teaspoon on each thigh, rubbing it all over nice and even. A little bit more salt, but on the cavity side, one teaspoon of kosher salt. And this is where the beauty of kosher salt really comes into play. You can actually see where it's landed. Table salt does melt into any liquid very quickly. It's looking pretty darn good. Okay, a couple more things to do. Just tuck the wings. That prevents those wing tips from burning. Exactly. And now, here's the legs. We're gonna turn them inward. So they were like this, now they're like that. Gotcha. Let's move over here. So I'm putting this onto a wire rack that's set over a rimmed baking sheet. I do have to wash my hands, but after that, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. It's going to stay in there uncovered for 24 hours. And that's so that mm. any of the surface moisture can evaporate in there and the salt can work into the meat. It's gonna have a beautifully juicy chicken with nice crisp mm. skin. All right, chicken's out of the fridge. Mm -hmm. It's in there for 24 hours, so all that salt has penetrated the meat. So let's talk about the other component. It's the bread salad. It's gonna start with bread. Now, Zuni uses ciabatta. We love ciabatta. Mm. Ciabatta is about 50% holes, though, right? <laughs> it is. So due to the cooking technique that we're going to use, we needed something sturdier. That had a little bit of a tighter crumb, but still had a rustic appeal. So we are using a rustic country loaf. It's gorgeous. It is beautiful, yes. Now, here's the thing. We don't want too much crust on this loaf because it's really difficult to get it to soften. Some of the crust is nice and soft. Mm -hmm. The bottom, not so much. It's just too hearty. So we are going to cut off the bottom crust of four slices. Very clever. Now we're going to cut this into one inch cubes. So I gotta cut it into one inch slices first and then cut across. 
what's most important is that we end up with about five cups of bread cubes. All right, so that looks good. Let's put these in here. Now, back in Zuni, they actually take that chicken juice after it's roasted and they reduce it down and they use it to toss with that bread. Mm, so good. It is so good. <laughs> We're going to do something similar. Our first introduction of chicken to the bread is one quarter cup of chicken broth. Mm, a bit easier. We're also using two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. That's to give it some nice moisture, but also the oil is going to help the bread crisp. All right, I'm just going to toss these until they're evenly coated, just like that. And now, into the pan. We're not just using a regular roasting pan, we're using a 12-inch skillet. It's exactly the right size for this job, you'll see in just a second. So this is going to go right into our 12-inch skillet. All right, if you wouldn't mind, just putting that aside. All right, so now I do want to arrange the bread. Any pieces that have that dark crust, I want them to be in the center, but the pieces that are just mostly uncrust, right, not a lot of crust, they're gonna be on the side because the chicken is going to sit right in the center. This is going underneath the chicken. So we want the chicken juices to really soften the crust. So we got most of those crusty bits crust side up right in the center. Before I put the chicken on top, I'm gonna take some paper towels, just press any excess moisture that might still be on there. That looks good, nice and dry. So this is gonna go right on top of the bread. There we go. Mm. In order to get the skin super crispy, I'm going to brush the skin with two teaspoons of that extra virgin olive oil. All right, a little seasoning right on the skin as well. This is one quarter teaspoon more of the kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. This is going to go into a very, very hot oven, 475. Big blast of heat. Yeah. We want that so we can really start to cook that chicken. It's gonna stay in there for about 45 to 55 minutes. I'm going to rotate the pan about halfway through. Ooh, that's a roast chicken. You can see the juice is bubbling under the skin. So that looks great. I am going to wrap this handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've burnt myself too many times. Yeah. We're using an instant read thermometer. We're looking for 160 in the breast meat. That looks good, but around 175 in the thigh meat. That looks great. We know the chicken is done all over. I'm gonna get this out of the pan. Oh, so tender. I'm gonna go under there with a spatula and move it to my cutting board. There we go, and get any bread back into that pan. <laughs> I mean, look at this bread, it soaked up the juices. I am going to take that spatula and just loosen it from the bottom of the pan. This is gonna sit here for a couple of minutes. If I didn't do this, the bread would start to adhere to the bottom. Look at the color of this crouton. It's almost as if they were fried in schmaltz. Oh, because they were. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move down to the vinaigrette. Now we're starting with a little champagne vinegar in the bowl there. Mm. Two tablespoons of champagne vinegar. Yeah, yeah, but champagne vinegar is lovely because it has a very light, acidic flavor. Sure does. And we're also going to highlight that by using a little bit of Dijon. This is a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Also, it's going to help to emulsify our vinaigrette. A little bit of salt. We have a quarter teaspoon more of kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So I'll whisk this together. Now that all of this is mixed in, I'm going to gradually add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. So it's one part vinegar to two parts extra virgin olive oil. And I'm just using a back and forth whisking motion. It's just easier to do this, but it also is going to really help keep this in an emulsion. And that looks good. All right, couple more additions. We're adding just plain old scallions. These are sliced three scallions, whites and some of the greens. And we're gonna use this vinaigrette to soak the currants. This is two tablespoons of beautiful currants. They're gonna to start to pick up some of that beautiful flavor from the champagne vinegar. And that, as they say, is that. All right, it's the end of the recipe. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it all mm. together. Start pulling away this leg quarter here and just take a knife right in there and just pull that away. So now, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna find a dry spot here on the carving board because that skin is super crisp. I'm gonna flip it over and then use my knife to find where there's a little bit of a line, a demarcation line. That is exactly where I should cut the drumstick from the thigh. All right, we're going rustic style like Zuni does. Mm -hmm. They don't carve every single piece. All right, so now I'm gonna take my knife and just go right through that skin, right alongside the breastbone. Use my 
towel here if I need to. And that chicken stays hot for a good while after you take it out of the oven. It sure does. So protecting your hands as you carve is a good idea. I'm gonna pull this wing away, go in there with my knife and find where the joint meets the breast meat. For the breast meat, I like to get out the old slicing knife because we want to preserve this beautiful bit of skin. We're gonna slice these into about three quarter inch pieces. Anywhere between a half an inch and three quarter inch is great. Let's move on down to the salad. So a few additions into this arugula. This is five ounces or five cups of arugula, of course, washed and dried very well. All of that gorgeous bread that was cooked in the chicken fat. Oh my goodness. Any juices in the pan. Now, you see this little bit of juice right mm, here? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to lose any of that good, good chicken flavor. So those are gonna go right to our vinaigrette. This is going to go on top of our croutons. Just start tossing away. I'm gonna put this right next to the chicken. Well, this is my kind of food, a perfectly roast chicken and a gorgeous salad. This is definitely company worthy dinner. Now let's drink it in for a moment, shall we? I mean, look at that. It is just gorgeous. Can you imagine putting this on your table if you had just some friends over for dinner. You'd look like a rock star. You would. <laughs> Shall I serve? Please. All right, I'm gonna start by plating some of that beautiful salad, making sure that you get plenty of those croutons. Oh yeah, don't skimp on the In croutons. In fact, there was one here Oh. That had your name right yeah. on it. I'm gonna give you some white meat here. Perfect. And then a drumstick. Oh, I love the drumstick. I'm just going right for the heart of it. The I crouton. noticed that. Mm. Mm. It's almost toffee-like. It has that sticky, chewy, schmaltzy. It's like chicken candy. Mm. All right, tucking into the actual chicken. Beautiful crisp skin on top. Perfectly seasoned. Mm -hmm. And breast meat is very, very moist. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Well done. Thank you so much. So if you want to make an iconic San Francisco supper, start by butterflying a chicken, then salt it and let it air dry overnight. Cut some country style bread into cubes and toss with chicken broth and olive oil. Roast the chicken and bread together in a skillet and make a quick vinaigrette with champagne vinegar, scallions, currants, and some of the chicken juices. Serve with some baby arugula and there you have it. From America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a wonderful new recipe for roast chicken with warm bread salad. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.